I invest into not-for-profits and I make money out of it. Some of you may be thinking, this is unethical, but that it goes against the principles of philanthropy. And honestly, I don't blame you. When I first heard about social investment, I also had my doubts. In the past, I had given money to charity. I had volunteered several times. I had even helped fundraise for them. So how could I now make money out of them? And more importantly, why would I want to do so? Let me tell you a story. Every day when I go out from work, I pass by a Starbucks. And outside, there's a homeless man. Long, ginger beard, big smile. He's very chatty. People give him change, sometimes food, sometimes cigarettes. And he's always very grateful. But what makes him so unique is he's always got a book in his lap. It's mostly adventure books. I tend to think they're his favorites. And there's a mix of sadness and empathy, but also hope in this picture. He gets enough coins to buy himself food. He spends his night in a hostel whenever it's cold outside. But how could we make things better? I often think to myself, how could we empower him? In times of austerity, with over 20 million people unemployed across Europe, with youth unemployment as high as 40% in some southern European countries, such as Spain, with an increasing aging population, with 27% of children at risk of poverty or social exclusion, the welfare state is failing to work. In the 1940s, the welfare state took on the responsibility to protect society, to build a safety net to protect the most vulnerable individuals. And today, today it's throwing its hands up. Government cannot cope with the gap in provision in social services. Shifting demographics and changes in the global economy have left insufficient public funds to address today's social issues and less likely the ones in the upcoming years. The credential of capitalism around steadily raising the living standards of individuals is now questionable. The principles of socialism around equal distribution of income and wealth is also questionable. So forget ideology. We need to stop turning to government for magical solutions. Instead, we need to address the, ca the capital market and seek how money can leverage positive change. So how can money from the capital markets make meaningful and impactful interventions? Or let's put it another way. How can we incorporate value into our investments in an effective way? And I'm not talking about investing with impact, because we're all in favor of a business that creates jobs, that improves lives. But that's not really dealing with the issue. Social investment supports organizations whose main mission is to address that change, to create that positive change, to generate greater outcomes. Let's say a charity that runs hair, um, care homes or um, energy community uh, company or a, um, a charity supporting homeless people. Social investment is there to channel the necessary funds into these organizations so that they can deliver their services and generate greater social outcomes. But social investment also seeks for a financial return. And there's a preconceived idea that anything social does not need any accountability. It's social, therefore it's good. Philanthropy does good, right? But immediately, four questions pop in my head. The first, how do we ensure we are consistently achieving greater social outcomes? The second, how do we maximize the value of our intervention? The third, how does this promote greater efficiencies? And the fourth, how does this encourage social innovation? So social investment is not here to substitute other programs. It's here to complement them. 
and grants and donations have played a key role in the development of the social sector. But charitable donations in government can only take us this far. So as a social investor, we request a financial return in order to bring back that level of accountability. An interest, therefore, represents three things. First, sustainability. Because we invest into organizations that have sustainable business models. Therefore, there's a proven evidence of demand for their services and products. Second, improved efficiencies. Because in times of austerity, organizations will want to reduce costs to become more productive. And it's, this is usually linked to innovation. And third, impact. We want to generate greater outcomes. We want to know what is happening with our money. So how many homeless people have been supported into stable accommodation? Or how many families have now access to affordable, clean energy? And what if we went one step further? And what if we said that the returns will depend on the outcomes achieved? The greater the outcomes, the greater the returns. This is called payment by results, and is very common in the UK. Let's take an example. A charity that works with homeless people. It supports them into stable accommodation. It um, helps them find a job, it trains them to find a job. And it reconnects them with their families and relatives. We engage with a local authority which after a five-year evaluation will repay investors based on the results achieved, based on the reduced number of rough sleepers, the number of homeless people that have been supported into stable accommodation, and the number of homeless people that have now a part-time or a full-time job. And by doing so, you are aligning the interests of government who's desperate for the outcomes, the interest of the social investor who seeks for that financial and social return, the interest of the charity whose mission is to, to support those individuals and the beneficiaries themselves, the homeless, the rough sleepers, or in my case, my ginger beard homeless friend. Rather than designing an intervention to meet a need, like most public interventions do, we are preventing escalation of a social issue in an effective way. Because we are working with organizations that understand the problem and understand the root cause of the problem, because they're in the field, and we're paying for the results. So social investment is reshaping the relationship between the financial gain and the common good. And what's really interesting about these organizations is that they're determined and focused. They believe in what they do. And they know why they're doing what they're doing. And that's what makes them really focused and effective. They really want to create that positive change. Let me share with you some examples. So this is Nisei. And Nisei is a hero rat. She works for Apopo. Apopo is a Belgian not-for-profit that trains giant African poached rats to search for landmines. The founder of Apopo wanted to address the global mine problem. So wars have transformed thousands of square kilometers of land into areas that nobody dares to enter. In some African countries, there are up to nine mine-related casualties per day. Apopo trains these rats to search for the landmines. They can search 200 square meters in 20 minutes. It would take a human 25 hours to do the same job. In Mozambique, Apopo has destroyed over 13,000 landmines and brought back over 1,000 hectares of land into safe and productive use. Mozambique has now been declared free of all landmines. And no rat died. <laughs> Let's see another example. This is Mark. This is a payment by results scheme. 
and Mark is part of the Teens and Toddlers program. In the UK, one out of eight 16 to 24 year olds is neither working or training or in education. Teens and toddlers, well, we know basically that people, young people with um, low educational attainment, with low self-esteem and no role model to look up to, is less likely to successfully transition into work, training or education. Teens and Toddlers is a UK charity that has developed a very successful program. And it's very simple what they do. There's a teenager, usually with disruptive behavior, that gets assigned a toddler who needs extra care in nursery. So this teenager suddenly becomes the toddler's playmate and his role model. Therefore, the teenager has a feeling of responsibility, of belonging, and he feels respected. And it's also a work placement opportunity for him. Results have shown that 97% of young people that have gone through the Teens and Toddlers program are now either in education, training or working. And 88% of them feel more confident. And these are just two examples. The sector is full of really inspiring um, social entrepreneurs that really want to make positive change. But in order to do so, you need money. You need seed capital in order to develop an idea. You need an initial investment note to train your rats. You need capital to um, roll out the teens and toddlers program. Social innovation will not happen if there's no money to back it. Social entrepreneurs will not thrive if there's no money to back them. Let's see one last example of how social investment can generate positive change. So Harry Specters is a social enterprise that employs people with autism to make chocolates. During its first two years of operation, it employed 12 people and provided relief to 22 carers. In the UK, unemployment amongst people with autism is over 80%. So Harry Specters wanted to continue to grow, to support more people with autism, and was looking for investment. Well, this is what happened. A group of social investors and individual investors decided to invest into a bond with an 8% coupon. Investors receive principal repayments, and the interest, they can choose whether they receive it in the form of cash, chocolate, or a mix of cash and chocolate. And this intervention is going to save 40,000 pounds per individual per year, just by shifting these individuals from public support into employment. So the days of government providing welfare are gone, and austerity will only make things more challenging. Social investment can fill in the gap in a new and effective way. But it needs all of us. It needs all of us to challenge convention. It needs all of us to make the right consumer choices. Let's say you had today the option of two companies. One. A company, simple business model, no impact. Another, a company that reinvests 50% of its profits into projects in Africa. Which one would you choose? Let's invest into the change we all want to see. Thank you.